Well, we are taking your questions today for Lisa Briggs. The number to call, 270-270-9933, and the phones are wide open if you have a question for Lisa. And Lisa's joining us live now from the Bruce Company. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Pretty good. We have a bunch yeah. of poinsettias here from the Bruce Company, and what's the trick of keeping them looking good? So the best way to keep them, to keep the color, is to make sure they get plenty of light and not super hot, but they don't like cool temperatures. So if they, you don't want to put it in a draft, nor do you want to have it next to a heating duct. So they're a little particular about that. Also, the number one thing with poinsettias is that people overwater them. And I know that yours are foiled and bowed. And sometimes if you get a foiled and bowed poinsettia, so it's in that sleeve, you need to remember to put a hole in the bottom so it drains. Because if the water sort of accumulates in that like a dish, then the plant will drown and it looks really dreadful pretty quickly. How long should a poinsettia last? You know, I know people who come in in the summer and they're like all giddy because they <laughs> say their poinsettia is still like looking great. And we're like, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> They're uh, from uh, Mexico. So they that's the kind of dry, sort of warm climate, that, sort of arid. That's the kind of conditions that they like. Okay. All right. Let's go to the phones. We'll start with Marilyn in Sun Prairie. Hi, Marilyn. What's your question? My question is, we have a smoke bush that has turned into a tree. When's the best time of year to trim it back? So Marilyn, smoke bush put their flower buds on right after it's done flowering. So you can trim it back now but you're gonna prune off all those beautiful flowers. So I would wait until after the floral display, which is usually in sort of early to mid June, and then you can go ahead and cut it back. I don't know what a smoke bush is. It's got that purple leaves mark and it's got these really kind of frothy, cloudy flowers, usually Ooh. in pinks. Um, it's sort of borderline hardy here, so Marilyn must have a really super good place if it's that big. Yeah, it sounds pretty. And they set the, the, set the buds in the fall? In the no, they set them after they're done blooming. Oh. So usually by end of July or early August. So any pruning after that just cuts those flower buds right off. So you'd want to prune it right when they're done flowering. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's go to Chris in Madison. Hi, Chris. What's your question? Yeah, I was kind of curious what you might recommend for a relatively um, slow growing, not very tall growing evergreen that could be used as a border between uh, one piece of property and another piece of property in sandy soil. In sandy soil. Yeah. I would say, is, is this a sunny spot or shady? Uh, it's sunny, I think, most of the time. This okay. is in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, but, um, you know, we're, we're trying to put a border. I would go with, 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 with junipers. junipers, because there are, there are a number of varieties or cultivars that will have quite a, you know, a compact habit, slow growth, but junipers like dry places and they're super hardy, so you won't have any problem with it. But this is up in the UP that he's, he's planting. Yes, yeah, they're, junipers are really hardy. Okay. Okay. All right, that, that, should be, that would be a good choice, I think. All right, thank you for calling. Let's go to Kathleen in Waniwak. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. What's your question? Um, I have iris rhizomes that I dug up uh, a while back, hoping to get them back in the ground. I was trying to get rid of the lily of the valley underneath, so I dug up mm -hmm. the whole, whole plot. Now I, okay. I didn't get them back in, and the ground's frozen. I don't know how to store them for the winter so I can replant them next for next year. <laughs> I have to say we're in the exact same boat because I dug up about <laughs> half of mine and I didn't get them back in either. Like I'm really bad. So what I'm gonna do with them is put them in a, like a flat cardboard with a little bit of either um, some peat moss or some wood shavings. And just, I'm gonna check them every couple of weeks because you don't want them to shrivel up. So it might be that you will have to miss them a little bit. Cut the fans back to about three or four inches. And then as soon as you can dig, get them back in remembering that they like to be planted really shallowly and I would not expect flowers next year because I'm not going to expect flowers next year. This is, right. coming, this is coming from the experts. Right. I know and I like I did the exact same thing so <laughs> see even the experts do nonsense like that. So. We are out of time unfortunately. You're in good company. <laughs> We're out of time. Thank you all for calling in Lisa. Thanks you for your time. Thank you Lisa. Great Thank to you. see you. We'll see you soon.